everyone! My friend who started me on this journey told me that there's a sort of unwritten rule in music stores, which is no stairway to heaven. Not because the song is bad, but actually because the song is so good that practically everyone looking at a guitar wants to test the instrument by playing Stairway to Heaven. As so very many of you suggested, I sat down and I listened to this song for the first time. And you were right. What a masterpiece. Watch my reactions and thoughts as I climb this stairway in my first hearing. And yes, I will be pausing the song along the way whenever I feel like I need to share a thought with you. And then join me afterwards as I look at some really interesting stuff on the harp and piano in relation to this song. Plant and Page are genius. And thank you for this suggestion. Okay, so here I am ready to listen to Stairway to Heaven. And as I said, my friend told me this is probably Led Zeppelin's most iconic piece. And, and I guess I can agree with that because I know this name, Stairway to Heaven. I've heard the name before. I don't know if I've actually ever heard the piece, but I've heard people refer to Stairway to Heaven. So I know it must be iconic. And um, let's get started. It almost has a little bit of a Celtic sound to it at first, a little bit Irish Celtic something. Nice acoustic sound, you know, the, the flutes and the guitar, it's very sweet and gentle. There's a lady who's sure all it glitters is gold, and she's So this voice, does the first entrance of it, it it sounds very special, like um it's very, uh, what's the word I want? Transparent. It feels like somebody is being rather, very open about their, their selves through their voice. Lying the stairway to heaven. When she gets there, she knows if the stars are all closed with a word she can get. There is a sort of Celtic, it's not really blatantly so, but it does have a little bit of a Celtic sound. And she's buying a stairway to hear. Yes. There's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure. So I'm, I'm going to leave this Celtic idea behind, but I, because I want to be able to give attention to what else is in the music, but, but what I'm hearing that makes me think Celtic, because it's not, it's not really folk songy type too much. It's, it's more sophisticated than a Celtic folk song, but there are specific little uh, musical, musical effects that are very classic and identifiable as belonging to the Celtic music tradition. And you hear it in the folk music. You, you hear it, you can sometimes hear it in Baroque music too, but, but there's this certain, these little things, little ways of handling a note, little um, lilts, you could say, and maybe I'll explain a bit more of that in the second half. We'll see what else I discover in the music. But but that's why when I was listening to it the first the, so far, I was just like, that, that has Celtic overtones. It There is something about it. And I'm hearing these little elements. And that was, that's what makes me 
think of it in that way. Anyway, let's go on and uh, I'll see what else I can listen for and try to discover as much else as there is. There's a songbird who sings Sometimes all of our thoughts are misused It's very beautiful. I like it. The way the, the music now has this more rhythmic drive, it's still gentle, but I can feel that it's more, a little more rock, but, but the voice is so, uh, what should I say, peaceful, so meditative, so uh, just living in its own world. It's like it's not being affected at all by what's happening in the music around it. Feeling I get when I look to the west and my spirit is crying for leave. In my thoughts I have seen rings of smoke through the trees and the voices of those who stand up. So, again, I have the lyrics beside me here, and I see that they're very complex. They don't have an immediate meaning, so I'm not going to try to get into them right now, but, but the voice is so expressive on every word, and like when it says, and my spirit is crying for leaving. I don't know exactly what that means in the, in the larger context, but in that moment, you hear all of that in the voice. It's very, very um, exquisitely performed in that way. It makes me wonder Livelier here, right? It's a little more upbeat, even in the voice. Again, it's more like a new day. This humble feeling. The music is not. It's not very fancy. It just helps the piece to carry along. If there's a bustle in your heart, don't be alone there. It's just a sprinkly for the May Queen. <laughs> That's interesting. It in that moment it was almost sarcastic sounding. Yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, and there's still time to change the road you're on. I was starting to say the music is not really fancy. It's not really elaborate in the way that um, I would, that we think of that word elaborate or fancy, but it's it's very sophisticated and it's very 
sensitive. It's immediately adjusting to every little nuance and, and innuendo that the singer and the words and the, it, it, it's shifting all the time. Interesting bass happening down there underneath it. Your head is humming and it won't go in case you don't know. The Piper's calling you to join him. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know your stairway lies on the whispering wind? Interesting. Buoyancy to it here. It didn't happen at the beginning. Now it's changing again. Kind of a like a an announcement or a call of it. Proclamation. And I guess I'm, I'm beginning to notice that a lot of rock songs have this sort of guitar solo moment. And this seems to be the solo moment in this piece where the electric guitar is kind of going a little bit wild and having some fun. I guess that seems to be a feature that I'm discovering as belonging to this type of music. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's where the voice comes in? It's very different than it first was and even earlier in the piece. on that word roll that was going on and on and on and then finally it ended and then and then the instruments carried on that little line that's pretty cool <laughs> I was surprised at the end. I didn't expect that big dynamic ending. The piece started so, so gently and sweetly, and it was just kind of carrying along in this very almost lullaby style, right? And then, but it, and it built up so gradually. The, the big part, I guess I'll call it, kind of from the guitar solo onwards, it didn't, there was no shock of the transition because it happened so smoothly up to that point that it was kind of going a bit more and a bit more. And then when it came, it belonged. 
but at the same time it was unexpected very nicely done and then that last line at the end kind of takes us back to the beginning this sort of haunting uh, melancholy almost like it's searching for some meaning or understanding and it's not it's just a little bit wandering around a little bit very interesting i'll have to dig into this a bit and see what i what i can bring out a bit more than that but that was my first listen so this is about three days worth of listening research and deep analysis of the music score the song originated in 1970 when jimmy page and robert plant were spending time at a little Welsh cottage called Bron Ir Aur. I'm not sure I pronounced that perfectly, but anyway. Page always kept a cassette recorder at hand, and the idea for this piece came together from bits of taped music that he'd gathered along the way. He said that he wrote the music over a long period. The first attempts at lyrics, written by Robert Plant next to an evening log fire at Hidley Grange, were partly spontaneously improvised, and Page claimed that a huge percentage of the lyrics were written then and there. He said Jimmy Page was strumming the chords and Robert Plant had a pencil and paper and that's how the lyrics really developed. Talking about Stairway to Heaven, Plant said, and how beautifully was that in its first conceptually to achieve a song Take it from start to finish in that sort of almost symphonic build, even with the fact it gets faster and faster. It's great. Intentional drama and all that, it's super. Stairway to Heaven is widely regarded as one of the greatest rock songs of all time. It is also the biggest selling single piece of sheet music in rock history, I found out. Clocking up an average of 15,000 copies yearly. An article from January 2009 Guitar World magazine rated Jimmy Page's guitar solo at number one in the publication's 100 greatest guitar solos in rock and roll history. Of course, having such a popular hit can be a two-edged sword because, and I know this myself as a performer, it's hard to stay connected and keep a piece feeling fresh when you're performing it very, very frequently. And I guess with all the popularity around this song, they kind of ended up feeling that way too. They asked Robert Plant, what's your relationship with Stairway now? And he responded, I don't know. It's, it's like a relative of mine somewhere. He's by the sea somewhere and got his hands behind his head and he's lying back in the sand going, love me. <laughs> and I guess I can kind of relate to that. I want to talk about the music a bit. This song is quite a masterpiece. It has so much about it that is so perfect. And again, it's a song that doesn't do a lot of fancy tricks. Its perfection lies in how every little detail, every second of the way, is so perfectly handled. First off, yes, it does have a very Celtic sound. After reading about how the song originated and what inspired it, it's no wonder. I mean, not only was a lot of inspiration for the lyrics drawn from a Scottish poet, but Jimmy Page and Robert Plant were actually spending time in a remote cottage in Wales when they were working on it in 1970. So of course the environment must have helped to set the mood as they were developing this song. You know, at the opening, it starts out with simple acoustic sounding guitar and recorders. I'm not talking about a recording device, but I'm talking about the flute type instrument that you hear in the recording. Those are called recorders. I feel like this guitar at the beginning is a sort of echo of the harp, which in turn happens to be very strongly identified with Celtic music. In fact, there's a type of harp that is called clairsach, which is a traditional instrument going back to medieval Ireland and Scotland. And there's another kind of harp, which is considered the national instrument of Wales, and it is called the Welsh triple harp. And if I play a bit of this song on my harp, you can hear how nicely it fits the instrument.
you hear how it just belongs on this instrument. And um, I'm so happy that I'm a harpist because it it's nice to be able to relate to a piece like that that is so new to me and at the same time feels so familiar. Of course, there are some other little things which add to the Celtic impression, one of which is how some of the notes are treated. There's a little rhythm which you can hear sometimes in this melody, especially if you're listening closely to Robert Plant in his voice. And in music we call this rhythm, the we sometimes call it the Scottish snap, because it's so strongly identified with Sc Scottish and Celtic music. It is a very short, energetic note, followed by immediately by a longer note. It kind of goes like this. Or I could do a whole series of notes like that, like maybe, um, maybe this. Right, just some notes in a row, nothing particularly belonging to anything. But you hear the rhythm, which is short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. You find that a lot in Celtic music. Here's the opening of a Scottish folk song, which, and I'll play it straight first. So you can hear just the simple melody. And then I'll add this little Scottish snap rhythm, as is common in the traditional style. So here's how it goes. Okay, that's straight without any of the traditional stylistic elements added. Now if I then go like that, like this, Suddenly it gets a whole lot more character and you begin to feel this very Celtic flavor to it. Now here's a line from Stairway to Heaven and I'll play it straight like this. Okay, and it, you can tell it's, it's a nice melody, it's singable, but it doesn't have a lot of um, personality to it. And then, if we make the harp start mimicking the type of thing that, that the singer is doing, you'll start to notice it sounds much more natural. And that's that little, what I'm going to term today, a Scottish snap. So now, when you listen to the Led Zeppelin group doing this song, you might start to notice some of these little ornaments along the way that give it such a lovely quality. One of the things that stood out to me as I listened to it these last few days is how naturally and seamlessly it progresses, transitioning from this simple, plaintive, Celtic-like opening all the way through to the wonderfully alive, very modern sounding climax towards the end. It happens, but it's so well balanced and smoothly achieved, you hardly notice what is being done in that moment. I'm almost reluctant to say that it builds in intensity because that could imply that it's driving or pushing towards a climax, but instead it's more like the shift happens imperceptibly and our awareness of it comes after it has already taken place. So I would say that Stairway to Heaven doesn't push or drive in the way that we commonly think about those words. It does shift and build and it does carry us to this fabulous climax, but it happens in such a way that we feel as if we are peacefully riding the current wherever it takes us and the climax is open and liberating rather than pressurized. This gradual progression is accomplished by a lot of well-balanced repetition and an equally well-paced layering in of instruments. I read an interesting observation about the way the instrumentation is done in this song. A lot of analysts tended to talk about how the instruments are added in and how the song builds towards the climax, but one discussion I read put it differently, saying 
It's more true to say that the classical music elements, the recorder, the acoustic guitar, are replaced, are replaced by more modern instruments in a sort of movement through time, a summoning of truths and myths through the contemporary. I guess I tend to agree because that way of describing it remains true to how we, or at least how I, experience the piece as I listen to it. But other than this progression or evolution of instruments through the course of the song, how does it accomplish all that it does? It has a lot to do with repetition. There is so much repetition in this song. Chord progressions that happen over and over. Melodic lines which are basically identical each time they come. Rhythms that are constantly happening over and over again. And even when we think that the music has changed to something new, it's still built on and using the exact same patterns. For example, this simple little melody, which we hear over and over and over again, for probably close to two thirds of the song, Right? We hear that over and over. And yes, the instruments do change underneath it, and occasionally we hear the chords change as well, but this melody is the primary focus, and it repeats over and over and over. It's as if Led Zeppelin is embedding the tune in our minds. We get to where we can sing it by memory no matter what is changing around or underneath it. And so, as we near the last portion of the song, where the voice suddenly starts singing something different and we feel like we're getting more into the, the rock style. Did it come out of nowhere? And the answer is not at all. It's built around the original melody, even though you might not think there's anything recognizable between the two. In fact, we can actually stack both melodies and play them as a duet, like this. I could take this melody here. I'm going to put it up here. And I'm going to have to take this a little bit slowly, but here's where you're going to hear. Okay? And you're going to see that they can actually stack together. And you see that it actually works, and you could even sing it as a duet, sort of. And so what he's done in this song is, by the repetition, he's built this melody in to our awareness and our, and our feeling for the piece. So that when he completely changes character, um, the harmonies underneath support us and carry us through. And you can almost imagine still hearing the same melody carrying through. And so it adds this extra layer of harmony that we're not really hearing, we're imagining. And it's just such a lovely little thing. And it's not a fancy trick, but it takes a master to do it well, and it's done very well here. Of course, by this point in the song, the pace is much quicker, more energized. But this original melody, which has been driven into our inner ear by so much repetition, now sticks with us as the tune changes so that we can still feel the first melody even now in this new part of the song. It's really brilliantly done and I love it. There's a classical piece that comes to mind which shares a lot in common with Stairway to Heaven while at the same time it's such a contrast to it. And that is Ravel's Bolero. I'll include the link in the description below, and if you listen to it, you will notice both of these pieces use a lot of repetition. Both of them rely on a simple melodic line and simple rhythm, which repeats over and over and over. Both of them build ever so subtly every moment all the way through the piece. But if you listen to the bolero, you will see what I mean when I say that Stairway to Heaven 
doesn't build such tension. Because with the bolero, we feel the pressure rising every step of the way. And, and we become very tense. So that the climax of the piece, at, at the end of the piece, is a massive explosion of tension. Both Ravel on one hand, and Plant and Page on the other hand, are musical masters. And what's fascinating to observe in these two pieces, Bolero and Stairway to Heaven, is how the composers went in two different, actually opposite directions with the musical effect. Bolero towards building tension and Stairway towards liberation. I don't think that we are wrong to say that both of them did a perfect job for their different purposes. But the fascinating part to me is that they achieved two opposite goals using the very same musical vehicle of repetition. So what do I think about the lyrics? Well, they themselves warn us that the words have two meanings. These lyrics are rich with symbolic references to allegories and mysticism. And Robert Plant wrote the lyrics, of course, and he said repeatedly that he drew inspiration from the works of the Scottish writer Lewis Spence, notably especially from his book Magic Arts in Celtic Britain. And I guess that Celtic esotericism and spirituality truly does come through in these lyrics. They are so profoundly spiritual from the beginning to the end. You know, the feeling which makes the spirit yearning for leaving towards the west, or the piper's calling you to join him on the path towards spiritual perfection. And if you listen very hard, you will finally get the two meanings of the words, when all is one and one is all. The strength that is found in unity and community, the need of being in harmony with ourselves, with others, with nature. I understand that over the decades, many have tried to dig in and find the true symbolism behind the words, getting into all sorts of theories, from Satanism all the way to Christianity. I'm not going to try to give an interpretation of each and every detail. I feel like lyrics like these aren't meant to have one meaning only. And just as soon as we think we understand what it's all about, we're likely to find out that we miss some very elemental point. They provide such an abundance of allusions and illusions. We can almost go in any direction and find something. But I will say that it seems to me Plant is paralleling materialism and spiritualism. Money, the symbol of this world and mortality, and heaven, a symbol of eternity. And the lyrics are woven with the music so that we sometimes feel as if we're viewing ancient druidic lands, while other times the artificial plastics of the modern world. But it seems that Plant is inviting us to dig deeper, beyond the surface, suggesting that not all that glitters is gold. So how do I feel about this song? I admire it. It is the work of masters. I feel like it is rich enough in content that I have room to enjoy and discover it for some time. And that is what I look for in music, something that has far more to offer than what I can gain in just a small number of listens. So those were the biggest thoughts that came to me over the past three days as I listened to this song and dug into it. I am looking forward to reading your comments and observations because I do and I do my best to read all of them and see what else I can learn about this as more information comes in and more thoughts from all of you and I'll see you next time here on Virgin Rock.